You may have seen California black cod, sablefish, or butterfish as it's also known at our local farmer's markets. But what you may not know is the story on how we get that fish to you so fresh. It all starts with Laura when you place an order online, via email, or over the phone. Laura coordinates all the orders to figure out what we need to bring to market. Then it's up to me and Justin to go catch that fish. After we get to the boat in San Francisco, we drive over to our storage facility to load up some bait for the trip. Everybody wants to know why my Prius always smells so bad. <laughs> Baiting up for black cod. After we're done loading up about 200 pounds of frozen squid for bait, it's time to go get ice. We'll slush big totes of seawater with shaved ice to make a nice slurry to put the fish in. What you doing, Justin? <laughs> Justin will slush three totes of ice below the deck. These three totes should allow us to get about a thousand pounds of fish on board before we have to come back into port. It's now Thursday afternoon and the boat is all loaded up. We're going to head to our slip for the night and leave early Friday morning to head offshore and set the black cod gear in hopes to pick it up Sunday and return on Monday. See the Golden Gate out there behind the boats? Justin and Brand take turns on wheel watch while the other sleeps. This is uh, what we have to deal with. In bed. This is where uh, Lily decides she's going to sleep. Oh, Lily. I'm being a bad girl. <laughs> Not the most comfortable. Here's uh, San Francisco. This is where we came out this morning about five hours ago, running way offshore. You can see these, uh, these are what we call the fathom curves. This is like a topographical map, uh, basically shows the depth. But you can see how the coast kind of gently tapers out to the edge of the continental shelf, which is where we're heading now. We're just getting ready to go off it, and then it's just a drop off, and there's these canyons, and in these canyons, Black it's about 8 a.m. and the sun's starting to rise. We're about an hour away from the black cod grounds. You can see all the gear on the deck and Justin in the back chopping bait, getting ready to load the pot so they can be deployed. What's up, Justin? Justin's working on bait. You can see he's chopping up a big block of frozen squid. The bait will go in these pots and attracts the black cod. We're finally out off the continental shelf and it's time to set the first pot. Brandon and Justin carefully shove the pot off the edge of the boat where it's attached to 300 feet of line before it gets to the next pot. It's important that we keep our hands, feet, legs, and everything else out of the way as this pot comes off the boat. Once the third pot leaves the boat, Justin gets in position to set the anchor. The anchor will keep the gear from walking around at the bottom of the ocean. Once the anchor has been set, now comes the time to pay out 3,600 feet of buoy line. That's right, 3,600 feet from the anchor to the surface buoys. This is an extremely dangerous task as the pots are falling to the ocean floor as the boat's traveling in the other direction. If a person was to get their hands or feet or legs or anything else caught, there'd be no way to stop either the boat or the gear and they would be sucked overboard. As we reach the end of the 3,600 feet of rope, the pots and the anchor continue to soar towards the ocean floor. We'll release three buoys at this spot and hope to find them 
48 hours from now when we come back to this area. As I head in to mark our location on our GPS plotter so we know where we left the buoys and pots, Justin rejoices to another safe set and decides to do the happy dance for the camera. Now that the first gang of three pots with its anchor and buoys are safely off the boat, it's time to set up gang number two for deployment. We'll carefully stack three more pots, hook them up to all the buoy rope, and get ready to deploy them. We'll do this a total of four times today before we head into the Fairlawn Islands to anchor up for the night. We got all the gear off the boat. About 12, 31 o'clock in the afternoon. They started today at three in the morning. You still awake, Justin? I'm awake. Lily's still hanging in there. We got about a three hour run to the Fairlawn Islands. You probably can't see them. They're just barely in the picture way out there. We're gonna anchor up there for a day and come back and get the gear. Catch some black cod. Lily dog, Justin, the Fairlawn Islands. This is where we'll stay the night tonight and wait for the black cod gear to soak. Beautiful sunset. It's the uh, research vessel on the islands. There's a little uh, laboratory on the islands. They just drop some people off at the islands. Us and them and nobody else. So while we're waiting a day for the black cod gear to load up with black cod, we spend some time messing around around the islands with rod and reel. We're allowed to catch 300 pound of ling cod a month and you'll often see these at our farmer's market alongside the black cod. Great fish and excellent fish tacos. Lily likes it. That's what we do for fun. It's been nearly 48 hours since we set our black cod gear and it's time to pick it up and see what we caught. We pull up to the buoys and try to get them in the boat before they get too close to the boat or under the boat into the prop. Lily, don't try. Once the buoys have been brought into the boat, Justin puts a barrel underneath the block. The block is a hydraulic contraption that allows us to bring up the pots from the ocean floor. Justin will now hand coil in 3,600 feet into two 55 gallon barrels until we reach the anchor and eventually the pots. Got it? I'm not trying to go. Go After about 45 minutes of hand coiling, the anchor gets to the block. Justin has to lean outside the boat, attach the boom witch to the anchor, disconnect the anchor from the ganyan, and then boom the anchor over the side of the boat. Next up is the first pot. Justin has to again lean over the side of the boat, attach the boom witch hook to the pot, disconnect the pot from the ganyan, and then we can hoist the pot over the rail and put it on the deck.
Once the pod is safely on the boat, it's time to release the drawn pucker, which will allow all the fish to drop out onto the deck of the boat for sorting. We will then swing the pot outside the boat so that we can safely sort all the fish. Justin will select the biggest fish to go down into the slush. The small fish will be released unharmed back into the ocean where they'll swim the 3,000 feet back down to the bottom. After all the fish out of that pot have been sorted and either released or put down in the slush, we'll stack the pot on top of the stack and make room for the next pot to come up shortly. The job often comes with scrapes, bumps, bruises, cuts, and even broken bones. As pot number two comes into the boat, we quickly notice that this pot is much better than the first one. Lots of big fish in this pot. Once again, it's time to release the drawn pucker to dump the load of fish onto the deck for sorting. This one's going to take a while. After nearly two hours from grabbing the buoy, we're finally to the third and final pot in this gang of three. This pot looks to be just as good as the last and promises to be full of big, beautiful black cotton. see here we're often visited by albatross. With wingspans of nearly 12 feet these are magnificent creatures. Very rarely are they seen on land and can spend as many as five years at sea before returning to land to breed. Most of the black cod that we catch range between three and six pounds. Every now and then we get a jumbo. This was the biggest black cod of the trip, weighing in at nearly 15 pounds. Wow. <laughs> Big black cod. It's now early afternoon on Sunday and it's time to head in. We have to buck easterly winds for the next five or six hours as we head back towards the port of San Francisco.
It's late into the evening now as we finally reach the Golden Gate. We have an hour left to go before we get to Pier 45. After already working for 18 hours, we finally arrive to the pier, but we still have hours worth of work left to do as we unload all the gear, the pots, the rope, the buoys from the boat. Now that we have all the gear off the boat, we're going to put it away in our storage locker and go get a few hours sleep before our early morning offload of fish. Here we are, Fisherman's Wharf, San Francisco Pier 45, the big black cod, we're unloading the whole tow of black cod, it's Monday morning. Four Star Seafood is going to cut and package these for us. They'll be up in Tahoe tomorrow on Tuesday. Roseville Farmer's Market on Tuesday. Doesn't get much fresher than that. The federal government is responsible for managing the population and stocks out in the ocean of these black cod. We're assigned quota that we can't exceed, and we have about a thousand pounds of quota left to fill in this period. We'll begin to hoist the fish up about a hundred pounds at a time to be weighed and make sure we don't exceed our quota. Last fish coming off the boat. Our bonus, our bonus ling cod. Oh, look at that beauty. There's someone this like now we got all the black cod off the boat. They graded, there's two different prices. Uh, we get one price for three to five pounders. They don't want anything that are under three pounds. And then there's another price for over five pounders. So it's a pretty substantial difference, uh, nearly double. So these guys will weigh every single fish and then they'll sort them into one bin or the other. These are all the big ones here. While most of our fish get sold to Four Star and will end up in the highest of high-end restaurants in San Francisco, we'll take some hand-selected fish to our market. Hector here is in charge of cutting and filleting all of our fish that go to our farmer's market. You can see in addition to the black cod that he's filleting, he's also been cutting some petroli sole, some halibut, some ahi tuna, and some fresh local swordfish. Keep in mind this is Monday morning and all these fish will be at market tomorrow. Shortly after the offload, Catherine from the Little Fish Company arrives to Pier 45. Catherine oversees all the packaging to make sure everything's labeled correctly and the fish is of the utmost quality. Catherine will make sure that all the fish gets divvied up properly and packed on ice to go to market tomorrow. Faster than this. This is all the fish going to Roseville Farmer's Market and up to Tahoe City in Truckee. It's noon on Monday and the fish is all packed and loaded up for market. Brand and Justin tie the boat up in the slip where it'll sit until the next trip. It's finally time to go home.
It's now Tuesday morning, just 18 hours after the fish have been unloaded. This is where Robert takes over. Robert is our salesperson at the farmer's market and is responsible for giving the customers their fresh fish that were caught just hours earlier. All in all, it takes nearly a dozen people operating from our home office in Grass Valley to Pier 45 in San Francisco and out to the middle of the Pacific Ocean in an effort to bring you guys fresh fish within just hours of it being caught. We appreciate you watching the video and hope to see you enjoy some of our fish at the local farmer's market.